to deal with this. Okay. Um, magnitude system, and the first thing that it'll be applied to is this V minus V thing that I said, don't worry about it, it means temperature. Uh, so these are textbook pictures. In every way, they are made to be pleasant and accessible, where they tell you the brightnesses, luminosities, in terms of solar units, like 10 times the luminosity of the sun, 100, 1,000. Um, radius is 10 times that of the sun. If you don't like reading that, there are also some pictures there to indicate that Betelgeuse is really big. It's a supergiant red star. And then um, these things in Kelvin and temperature and units that you understand. What you would get from an astronomy paper or a more advanced astronomy textbook or blathering incomprehensibly out of the mouth of especially an older astronomer is something like, oh, the B minus V color index is minus 0.3, so what? And then what you would get is absolute visual magnitude. And everything about this is really weird. So I like the small numbers, like two is kind of nice to keep track of. But what's wrong with this axis? Eight, six, four, two, zero, minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight. As far as I'm concerned, it's backwards. And this, um, so this B minus V color index and this absolute magnitude thing um, traces back to the first attempts to do this. So for one thing in clusters, um, we actually, because all the stars are close together, we don't have to worry about this problem too much. The fact that apparent brightness might be completely uncorrelated to luminosity. If we're working in a cluster, the apparent brightness is the relative brightness. If a star looks brighter than the star next to it in the cluster, it is brighter than the other star in the cluster. But the negative thing is weird. And this was an idea that is really, 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 really old. And at no point in the history of astronomy did people say, like, enough is enough. Let's count forwards instead of backwards. Um, I don't know why. It happened twice. Maybe it's, so I don't know if it's like a universal thing. Uh, but the Greeks, like, counted backwards as far as the rest of us seem to be concerned. And in there, there's a hubris that you know what the best thing forever will always be. Um, so this kind of Olympic ranking system is really how star magnitudes were first measured, is the brightest stars were first magnitude stars, stars of the first magnitude. And the next clump of brightest stars were stars of the second magnitude. And the dimmest stars were stars of the sixth magnitude. So this is how, in particular, this guy Hipparchos did it. So, and obviously no telescope, so this is just the human eye. So brightest are one, dimmest are sixth. And this has not been changed. So this is still the magnitude system. But now that we have telescopes, we can get out to you know, the limit of the Keck telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope. That gets out to 30-second magnitude. So six is the limit of the human eye. And these aren't linear units. They would correspond to a like, you know, factor of um, uh, 2.5 less, uh, less total power coming into the eye. So this would be, you know, uh, millions of less light coming into the um, Hubble Space Telescope. So that's correction number one, is that we don't go from magnitude one to magnitude six. We go from magnitude one to magnitude 32, because we have telescopes. But now we want to talk about the sun, uh, and we know it's a star. So the star would be negative 26th magnitude, sorry, negative 27th magnitude. And if we wanted to kind of parse the scale a little bit. One is kind of such a rough number that we really have magnitude zero stars, and Sirius is really bright. So when you try to do this precisely, you end up with negative magnitude stars. What that means is they're brighter than the positive magnitude stars. And this thing still runs brighter that way, dimmer that way. This is the magnitude system. You would think we would get rid of this, but no, we haven't. So. If something is negative fifth magnitude and something is second magnitude, which one appears brighter? Negative fifth, right? So this, OK, it seems OK now, but I, I swear this will get everybody. OK. So in practice, outside of a textbook setting, you don't measure brightness in terms of brightness. You measure it in terms of magnitude. And as a proxy for, now we start caring about different wavelengths of light. 
as a proxy for what type of light you're talking about or the overall visible light from a star, sometimes people will just say like visible magnitude as to distinguish it from infrared magnitude and ultraviolet magnitude. So this in particular, I could say magnitude V, V is for visual, so the amount of visible light coming through this. So let's say that um, this is you know, a fairly dim star, set of stars. We would have to look at it through a telescope because it's much greater than six. So this is maybe something you can do with like, you know, pretty reasonable uh, like amateur setup could get you to 12, I guess. So this is the scale. And now what we can do is we can look at these stars and we can do something else. We can come up with a rating system for how red or blue they are. Because astronomers, as well as revising history, the other thing they hate, apparently, is doing math. So to look at this star and figure out the temperature from the black body curve, like half of you guys are going to do on exercise six, would be a bit too much. They would like a proxy for the temperature. And what they really end up with is looking at um, the redness. So how do we determine the redness of the star? So this is the B minus V thing. And the trick that they came up with is to standardize a set of filters. So everybody gets the same set of filters, a blue filter, a red filter. V is for visual, is kind of the center of the band, infrared, ultraviolet filters. And now what you can do is you can put the filter over your telescope and just let in that light. And if, for instance, I let more light through my blue filter than my red filter when I look at a star, what do I know about that star? It's going to be up here. So the filter only lets through, you know, like the U filter would only let through U or ultraviolet light. So I put the yeah, so I put the blue filter over the telescope, and I see more light than when the red filter's over. The star appears bluer. And if these filters are standardized, then without having to find the temperature manually, I could just say, like, hey, the B minus V is some value. So this is kind of how this works outside of a textbook setting. Um, this obviously is not like an astrophysical object. Um, tell me what you can about this first flag on the flagpole, or anything else, actually. Maybe this lady's dress. So this is the all light filter, and then this is red filter, green filter, blue filter. Why is the flag red and white? Yeah, it looks really bright when it's coming through the red, and then when it comes through one of the non-reds, I don't see that much. Good. Uh, by that same logic, so it looks really bright, the flag does when I put the red filter on. So lots of, lots of light, lots of photons make it through. It seems to be really bright, so it's red. What's true about this lady's dress? Yeah, there's definitely some reddish aspects to it. I can tell you this much, is whatever is going on, there's not a lot of green in it. Okay, so this is the real picture. So the flag is absolutely red and white. And yeah, there's some red, there's some like bluish. I know it's not green, so definitely wasn't green. The tree of all of these, the brightest that it is, is the, the green. And actually, there's a lesson in this, too, is that that silly set of tree leaves, it seems to absorb all the light. And you see some biological purpose for the tree absorbing all the light. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, the the one that it kind of doesn't is the green. But, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do this with astronomy. So this is a set of astronomical images taken with astronomical filters. And this is a cluster of thingies. Um, it might not be a single, you know, it's not like Mickey Mouse here is out in the cosmos. This could be some compound thing. What can you tell me about this? Because you see what? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. This is, um, astronomers do this all the time. This is a photo negative. So the dark actually means more counts to help, you, to help guide your eye. So perfect logic, just flip the answer. So this is a, this would mean, the black would mean more counts and the, 
Yeah, I don't see a lot of ultraviolet light. And then of the rest of these, the one that shines the most is R. So yeah, maybe this is something kind of reddish. Um, and it's not a single thing, so there's another bit of stuff out there. So here, this shines the most in R. And then I have these two things seem to behave differently in infrared, which is a little bit weird. So maybe they're stars orbiting each other, a couple of different ones. I don't know. I actually just found this picture. I have no idea what it actually is. You'll have to spend the rest of your life wondering. OK, we can do this for really big extended objects, too. And this is a galaxy. So this is U, V, um, B, and then R and I. So this tells a really interesting story. So what's going on with this stuff? So these are the ultraviolet and violet filters. Yeah, so some maybe rash of star formation going on. And then out here in infrared, near, way, near infrared, it looks like this is glowing. Hot, yeah, absolutely hot gas that's maybe, in fact, we can take its temperature because I know that infrared, like this kind of shortwave infrared, this is glowing at about, you know, like hundreds to maybe 1,000 degrees Kelvin or something like that. So this is really nice in and of itself. And this is much more efficient than me creating and publishing like a heat map to you that talks about the average, you know, the average temperature at each of these locations. In fact, it has much more information to just show you the filter images. So we'll do this all the time. And this, the last thing is that we're going to make a really cheap version of the HR diagram with astronomer units. And cheapo astronomer units go like this. Is we know that in a cluster, all the stars are basically the same distance from each other, sorry, from Earth. So really far from Earth, really close to each other. So we don't have to find their luminosity. We can just get by with their visual magnitude. So on this, as a proxy for luminosity, we're going to replace that with apparent visual magnitude, which is to say the light that comes through the V filter, just because that's right in the middle of the pack, and that's pretty good. Works very well for stars. Our stand-in for temperature is going to be B minus V, where the blue filter minus the V filter. Why is that good? Well, if something lets in more, sorry, if something has a higher value of B, and a lower value of V, what color is it? Wrong. The magnitude scale is backwards, and it wants you to fail. If something has a higher value of B and lower value of V, what is it? It's red, because this thing goes backwards. Right? So just remember, it's really annoying. And it's, let's do an example, and you'll see. So what's the B value for this red star? 11.0. So we'll call this uh, red star. B is 11.0. What's the V or R value? You know, V is good enough value for this star. 0.8. So B minus V is 0.2. That's pretty red. Um, so what about the uh, B star? So what's its B value? B or O star, I don't know. 10.1, yeah, sounds good. Uh, all this blue star, 10.1. And then what's its, what's its B minus V? What's its V value? Ten point two, maybe, yeah. Minus 0.1. So the lower your B minus V, the hotter you are. And it turns out that this actually is irrelevant, um, or it doesn't care how close or how far away you are. It's actually kind of remarkable, is that you have a very close, you know, 13,000 degree surface temperature star and a really far one. They would both have basically the same B minus V value. 
So this is so much better than solving you know, thermodynamics problems. You know, usually people are a pretty easy sell on that. Um, so what I can do is throw on some filters and you can kind of see this. So this is the color index, we'll do B minus V. And this would be the blue filter and this is the V filter. And watch what happens as I slide up and down. So this is the amount of light coming through each one. So this is a star like our sun. It's got a positive V minus V of 0.45, which means that there's a little bit um, more V coming in than B. And then as I start getting cooler and cooler and cooler, you'll see B minus V going up and up and up. So now I'm basically an M star, and then I go the other way. And if you find something that's B minus V of 0.4, you're really, you know, it's not going to be there for much longer. So that. Um, I'll leave this on the slide so you can mess around with it. But the short, short story is this is the stand-in for temperature on these diagrams. And we kept the scale, so or slider, so this is hot, small b minus v, and big b minus v is cold. And this lets you do everything in-house. You just like, have a bunch of standardized filters. You rotate them to put them in front of your telescope, take some data. Okay. So that's the only thing you need to know, aside from the fact that I misspelled Friday as Monday. And any questions about um, midterm stuff or exercise six, I'm happy to answer too.